What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing at Adobe Live? Uh, you guys all know me, Nick Longo here from Los Angeles, and we have a fantastic packaging design session today and tomorrow with our good friend, Jack Forrest. Give Jack a <laughs> uh, first time welcome, right? First time welcome. Yeah, it's good to be man, here. It looks man, like this fun. is great. Yeah, so cool, man. So we have some great packaging stuff to kind of go over with you guys. Jack's uh, joining us and we're going to be doing some really cool stuff. Um, before we get into that, Jack, uh, introduce yourself. Tell everybody in chat who you are, where you are, what you do. Uh, let us get to know you a little bit more. Cool. Um, yeah, so my name is Jack. I'm a, a designer in Sydney, Australia where it's currently five in the morning. So excuse me, <laughs> excuse my, my lighting, my, my lack of natural lighting. Um, I'm, a, I'm working at a studio called Universal Favorite at the moment. I graduated uni last year, so I'm a, a fresh little baby in the workforce at the moment. Um, in my spare time, I kind of do a lot of different little graphic design work and that's kind of why I'm here probably. Great. I, um, I started an Instagram account about this time last year and that's kind of been blowing up and getting yeah you've been doing some interesting work. stuff there right yeah the fun of just doing posters every day and you can kind of just do whatever you want yeah <laughs> so i've been having a what, lot of fun doing that what made you start it was it just kind of like uh outreach kind of get your name out there um i think that was the kind of intent behind it it came it was during covid when we were all just staying home and so i had all sure. this spare time in my hands and it was i was kind of in this position where um as you're looking to graduate uni, everyone's kind of coming out with the same stuff. And I was kind of looking yeah. for a way to have some different stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that'd be a good way to just kind of start building different things and just have that to show for it. Yeah, fantastic. And if you, I know you have your uh, website up, you want to show a little bit of that, kind of take us through a little bit um, before we get into our topic today and uh, make some fun announcements. Yeah, cool. Go for it. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to just quickly show some random different little bits of work just to give you an idea of what it is that I do and the different kind of styles of work that I do. Um, so as a result of all that Instagram stuff, I was contacted by Forbes in Spain, which was pretty funny. And I did a little wow. um, illustration for one of their special editions. So this is kind of generally the style that I tend to go towards this kind of um, almost architecturally just blocky vector type thing. Sure. Um, and then sometimes I have fun adding a little animation to it just to make it a bit more interesting. That's great. And you did all the motion yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's effects. great, dude. Wonderful. Maybe Very that cool can be a, another live. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Because it's such a good thing to add. Like if you're fantastic in branding or illustration, what a cool little overlay to bring to what you do, you know, as yeah, far the as difference it makes work. as soon as you add any kind of motion to an illustration is insane. Nice. Well, that's great, dude. And there's his website. It's cheersjack.com. So for those of you who want to kind of take a look at his work while we're working on some stuff today, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, one of the things we want to announce before we get into like our stuff today and, and kind of our agenda with Jack, um, want to make sure you guys make sure you look at the Illustrator Creative Daily Challenges. They're hosted by my co-host of uh, from Office Hours, Andrew Hockrattle, and he's doing it every weekday at 1230 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you probably just watched him earlier. Hopefully he said hello at the end there. I didn't get a chance to check it out, but he's been doing that all week. So want to make sure you guys do that as well. And uh, let's just dive into this, Jack. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we're going to do. We're, we're talking packaging and we're talking cool. Illustrator. And I think we're going to probably do a little dimension maybe tomorrow, but uh, give us an intro of what our objective is today. Yeah, so today we're just going to look at doing... I was thinking we do a kind of wine label and do an illustration that's going to go on a wine label. Um, okay. And maybe that's a couple of different ones that we do over a couple of different options. We'll see how we go. But I was Great. thinking some kind of vignette -y thing mm -hmm. with a house in there, some kind of scene where you've got that rolling hills behind you and you've got that yeah. foreground, you've got a little house. Because as you could tell, I love doing my different houses. <laughs> exactly, right? So when you're at this stage, are you usually let's say, I know this is a pretty like wide open kind of brainstorm here for the brand, but what do you typically do at this point to kind of get your process going, uh, particularly when you fire up Illustrator and you've got a few uh, images for your inspiration? What are you thinking when you're at this point? Um, I'd normally just kind of start doing it really. Yeah. Because <laughs> you kind of, as, as you're kind of working through it, you can just kind of touch and feel out what looks good, what's kind of working, what's not, what's kind of balancing out. Because yeah. it all kind of comes down to the composition of it, really. And if it if it right. feels like it's sitting right, if it feels like it has depth and all those different kind of things. Yeah, 
Perfect. And when you're building the brand or even thinking of it, uh, do you keep certain kind of keywords in mind um, that you like to stick to or what process do you have when you're doing your packaging? Just kind of fun, I think. Yeah. The main yeah. thing, like you, you, you look at all the different packaging and stuff that you see in the supermarket and whatnot around the place. And the ones that stand out are the ones that are colorful and the ones that are fun. And it doesn't, it has that crazy effect where it doesn't really matter what the quality yeah. of the product is sometimes. If you see something that you think is cool, you're just like, oh, that's cool. I want that. Yeah, perfect. So we're going to be looking for, uh, we were talking earlier and Jack and I were saying, we want to definitely kind of pull from some great ideas. So we'll ask the chat tons of questions when we're in the development of here. But um, where do you want to start, man? Take us away, take it away. Oh, let's just start doing <clears throat> stuff. Yeah, yeah, if anyone has any questions or anything. Yeah. What I love about this too, is this is a great pro mm. process to go through, particularly for a lot of designers who want to get into packaging, but don't have a packaging client or don't do it at work. Here's, here's a great exercise to maybe follow along with and try one for your own. Wine labels are like the perfect thing to do for this kind of stuff, yeah. right? Well, yeah, as a, as a testament to that, I did one of my projects that I did last year, I just made a different, I made a random um, designed for a beer can. And then okay. this year I was approached by someone who saw the project on Behance and bought it and made it. So now it's wow, a real beer. Fantastic. <laughs> there you go, man. That goes to show you that sometimes it's just the, the unique kind of, uh, I always look at it as like, if you don't do packaging design and you get into mm. it, you might have a really fresh approach that maybe folks that are doing it day in and day out don't have yeah. sometimes, you know, yeah. you know, so you're just going right in and like let let's just start building. Let's just do a cool stuff. Angular, <laughs> yeah. Should should we ask like maybe for a name or a region from the chat as far as what's the name of this first brand or do you, do you have anything? Set wow, up? we're getting we're getting specific. Oh yeah, it. man. I'm not even a wine person, but I, I know you gotta you gotta know uh, this region. Variety. You gotta have a name and maybe like where it where it comes from, like what what part of the world. You want to you want to do this uh, no, the first one from Australia somewhere? You want to do, do that? Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah, that would work. All right, all right, folks. So we need a name for this brand. Um, and should we we should we do multiple brands here, or do you want to keep it one brand throughout the exercise? What do you think? Um, I think you do one brand, and then you kind of play around beyond that. All right, perfect. All right, so we're we're okay. Robert's got our first one. This is going to come from Perth. Is that okay? Is that does that make sense? Do we have that makes sense to me? In, I understand. Do we have that. vineyards in Perth. <laughs> we do, at least probably. I'm in All right. Sydney, so I can't we're, tell you exactly. We're one for one there, I guess. There you go. Um, <laughs> give us a really great name. Uh, I think with this idea of home and like, I, I I love the vibe that you're kind of starting already here. Maybe something that kind of relates to home or um, yeah. You name it. Give us some some words here that you guys think might be a great name, and I'll I'll pop a few out and see if Jack kind of digs any of these here. <laughs> working, so give us some name ideas, uh, chat. Let's see what we got. They're a little behind us on the delay, so we'll keep going. Do you keep some color palettes um, pretty steady, or are you? Yeah. Tell I, us a little bit about your color theory. I kind of keep all my different colors just sitting in um, in my library, mm -hmm. and. These are just a kind of random set of colors that I found a while ago now. And they're just quite a nice different little set of pastels. Um, Great. And so like I was talking about before, where just having kind of fun stuff makes, makes it more interesting. I think yeah. the color is definitely a way to kind of achieve that. Good. And when you have these kind of pastel-y colors that sit, sit together really nicely and that kind of work together in different ways, then you can, you can achieve that better than you would otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Especially at the moment That's where great. everything is kind of a bit more saturated, like the stuff you see around the place, you often would just yeah. find things that are quite dense and everything all the time. Yeah, it's it, and it's nice too. It's a little um, su more subtle on the eye, and I think too, it kind of has just enough punch to still be bright, but yeah. and not pastel and not so saturated, right? Yeah, it's kind of do you, do you, do you find yourself keeping colors? more signature to your style or do you veer off in certain ways? Um, how do you use color in-, in, in It's like kind of gone that projects? way, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think I, I don't really intend to be sticking towards just doing one kind of thing, but yeah. that's, that's kind of the way it's gone. Cause I do, 
I mean, I personally, I find it annoying when you're like trying to find a typeface or you're trying to find colors or whatever. And if I know that I've got this set of colors that are going to work every time and it's just a matter of getting like the scene right or whatnot. Yes. Then yeah. maybe that'll do the trick. Yeah. Gotcha. So I think we've got, so it looks like Steve gave us a good one for, this is going to be the Perth Pino. So that- Perth that, Pino, I, nice alliteration. I like that as maybe the the name of the variety, but how about the brand name? Like give us a vineyard name. I think maybe there's a, <laughs> if anybody wants to pop on Google and look, is there a really romantic sounding name of a city in Perth or something unique? That would be kind of cool. Um, someone, someone nominated Longo Forest Wineries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for a better one than that. But, uh, that's hilarious. Are, are you into architecture as well? Is that kind of where this love of like um, comes from or where, where, what's interesting you to do this? Or, to or be honest, I, the reason that I do a lot of this stuff is just because I am not very good at like illustrating in, in the, in the general sense of holding a pen and, and working around with it. Um, yeah. so I think I just kind of defaulted because when you're just working with these kind of shapes, like I can just snap it there or whatever, snap yes. it around the place in different spots and then it just kind of works. Okay. And when, when I don't have the confidence to actually pick up a pen, like those real illustrators and actually draw something, then I can kind of seek comfort in the fact that I can just use my little smart objects and snap them around the place. Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. I I'm the same. I I've always loved architecture and stuff too. And I think if you think of the first things maybe you drew as a kid and yeah. knowing you were really kind of digging creativity and stuff, for me, it was like houses, architecture, yep. cars. That was about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Like, you know, if it doesn't make sense and you know, if it does make sense, so you can kind of yeah. get away with just kind of having it work. Yeah. I found there's, there's a local area. There's a, 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 a I guess an area of Perth called Melville. Okay. That kind of, that kind of Melville wineries. You want to give that a shot for the first one? We can do that. Yeah. And then again, too, we can keep improving on that as well. There's, I'm looking through there. There's tons of great kind of, that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, when I, when I have my students kind of developing a brand, mm. I love to act, <laughs> surf's up Syrah. That's a good one, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be, that's going to have to be um, number two uh, as the variety for sure. So we got to write that one down. That's a great one. Surfs up Syrah. I love that. Or Syrah surfs up. Um, but uh, I love this idea of doing the DNA of the brand a little bit. Like, you know, and, and maybe that could be even if you look at great images or photography from that particular region, maybe some mm. of the colors of the landmarks or things like that could be the inspiration to what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, Packaging totally. is a story, man. It, it really is telling a story. That's, that's one of my favorite parts about packaging, you know? Well, yeah. Yeah, no, the, getting the inspiration from where it comes from and everything. Yeah. I mean, I kind of fall short in that area because I'm only ever just making things that I think would be cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, exactly. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. And I noticed too, like you, you're drawing like right on the label. Like I love that, 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 like, um, that bravery. I'm, I tend to like, <laughs> I tend to have a big artboard and, and start designing stuff just to kind of get like, I don't know if it's even just the beginning stages of it, but I love this idea mm. of just going right on there and going like, nope, here's my house. It's going to be right here in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be pretty. It's going to sit there. Yeah. Yeah. I Got mean, that's question. why it's a kind of weird just process around back and forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Got a question from Voodoo Val. What's up, Voodoo Val? Rockstar. She joined in on our... Um, we had a gr really big portfolio review with my students last Saturday and oh, yeah? Val was one of the reviewers and every student just fell in love with her. She had a great question, Jack, what is your mental process like when you are doing these kinds of illustrations? Are you keeping a specific perspective in mind? Um, you see, I, it seems to, I'm, I'm already seeing your style kind of happening there. You, this is more of like a one, what is this more like a 2d perspective? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's 2D, but trying to add some kind of depth to it, I think. Yeah, gotcha. And that, cause you could go three to three point perspective. You can go two point, you can go forced, but you're almost doing that like isometric kind of like just showing one side. Yeah, right? just kind of hinting it, yeah. Yeah, what's up Chris Porter? Chris is in the house. I'm seeing some friendly, friendly names showing up there in the chat. That looks cool, man. And then like, so we've got so we've got this idea of Melville as the name, and we're <laughs> going to call this one the, 
what was uh steve's first one oh the perth pino that's going to be the name but Mel melville is going to be the brand name of this first one we're going to be doing so looking good here melville. and any any um do you keep any principles in mind when you're doing like a label design like I know sometimes uh, a lot of folks either build a grid or they go off the third system, you know, like trying to keep things mm. uh, balanced. What, anything, anything there? Or are you just screw it? Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I mean, I think that kind of comes into it as you're kind of working through and mm -hmm. you can kind of realize that something isn't feeling right. Maybe you'll adjust what's going on somewhere else. or you'll, you'll change something else around. Um, but I don't necessarily, I don't like start with a, with any grid kind of in place. Yeah. Gotcha. Cause I think too, like once you're just getting something out there, you can always readjust and play around with things later. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but I think just diving in and, and building something fun and kind of going, how is this working? You know, let's see, let's see what we got, you know, yeah. cool. It's coming along good there. Nice. We have a house. Congratulations. Yep. There you go. <laughs> it's looking good. Ooh, Melville Merlot. That Ooh. might be, that's, that could be, I don't know. What do you guys think? Got a little competition with the copywriters in the chat room there. <laughs> <laughs> do you like to write copy for some of your work? Um, I do. Yeah. Have fun with that. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not great, but I find that if you, if you just do like any kind of alliteration or anything, then it's yeah. automatically good. <laughs> good. Oh, do us a favor. Let's let's go back and like, like build that tree again. I just want I, I I caught that in the corner of my eye when you were doing it. Let's. But like, perfect. I love that. You're like not only going to rebuild it, but I'm going to delete Boom. it. Perfect. So you just stretch one point. Yeah. And that's kind of already a signature. Like I'm like that's a Jack Forest tree right there. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing? <laughs> yes, exactly. There you go. I mean, I yeah, it. you can kind of. You can kind of pull these out if you want to get some slightly different shapes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, the simple is better, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. When you're doing stuff like this too, let's say when, if this was for a client, is your idea to show them maybe your, 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 the one, one kind of option or would you kind of, are you in the kind of camp of showing them maybe a few? How's uh, your confidence few. level? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, that's I a think great. Go ahead. If you're ever doing kind of work for a client at the end of the day, it's their work. Right. So mm -hmm. if they're happy with it, that's all that matters. Exactly. You know, it and doesn't I matter think if you kind of love it. It's a good kind of conversation. I know a lot of designers having as far as like narrowing it down to maybe two to three could be what a lot of us feel is a very confident one. I love people who just go, here's one, take it or leave it. Like mm. that's, that's pretty bold, but it is. <laughs> I know some designers that do that and they're very successful with it, but I think it's a matter of your own kind of taste and your, your, your relationship with the client. Um, yep. you know, again, like it's always about them and their, and their, and their thing as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cause like once you're done with the project, you're not looking at it again, are you? So whereas yeah, they're looking exactly. at it every day. Exactly. Exactly. So let's see, I'm, we've got, well, I'm going to take a look and see if Melville has anything uniquely cool or interesting about them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you find something. <laughs> Running a risk of insulting our Melvonians here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. There's the name of it. I love it. <laughs> Let's see what's what's so special about them. Because it would be kind of fun to put a little bit of a a unique thing. It's a suburb of Perth, Western Australia, located hey. on the city of Melville. Okay. Let's see if it's got anything unique. What is it known for? I'm going to take a quick look here and see. Of course, the Wikipedia page has not been filled out yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it is a very small little section, which is really kind of cool. I what's, love that. What's the population? What have we got? Oh, my gosh. 6,000. Oh, no. 4,822. Oh <laughs> <laughs> that is so great. Our city. All right. We're going to see a little bit about that. Um, and we've got some good names to go for here, which is going to be good um, about our city. Let's see. As we go through here, it's a suburb. It's got plenty of parking. Um, let's see. <laughs> Not, no nothing's, nothing sounding really um, uh, uh, convincing to put. You on can have a car place at the thing. shops, which is yeah. for each individual yeah. person. There you go. <laughs> got an abundance of opportunity 
um, social activity, open spaces set in a unique natural landscape. So maybe awesome. just having a, a bit of a, a nice landscape in the back would be kind of cool. Okay. It's upon the shores of Swan River in Perth. Ooh, okay. maybe a little river behind your house. Yeah. Uh, I love this. this. There's some good little uh, inspiration <laughs> there. <laughs> Let's see what chat's saying. Uh, Our House Blanc label on the bottle. That's a good mm. one. Melvillians. Yes, that's a good one. Uh, choose wine color, please, for a tree. It will look good. Oh, that might be nice, too. Love that style. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions that you guys might have for Jack as he's going through here? Um, yeah, I see you, Voodoo. That's true. Alex does show one concept. I, I talked to him about that. That's pretty good. Chris says, I think it's a good mix between the client being happy and what's best for them, too. Uh, they may love a terrible looking logo or design. That's the truth. How many yeah. times does that happen where, you know, why did you show it if if you're upset that they if they picked well, yeah. it right? <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop any questions you guys have for his design process. What we're doing here again. If you've joined us, um, Jack Forrest is joining us from Australia. We are going to be we're producing some uh, wine labels that we're going to be doing under this packaging design seminar, and it's today and tomorrow from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we are well on our way with the first one here. Uh, Melville Wineries is going to be the brand name here. We're talking <laughs> for maybe this first one. Uh, but Jax, your, your inspiration here started from the house and some of the pictures you found over there on the side, right? Over here, yeah. Yeah, I mm -hmm. like this kind of, this little triangular, what would you call that? I don't even know. The uh, the secondary window there? The, yeah. The, or just that, that roof axe. Let's call it a roof detail. How's Let's that? do that. Okay. That works. That sounds very good. Now we're getting into we, our architecture terms. <laughs> exactly. I don't, how, what's the, um, how would you describe graphic design uh, in your, in Sydney? Like give us a little, for those of us that aren't there, uh, yeah. what's, what's, what trends are happening? Like job market, Oof. give us, give us the idea of what's happening there. Jeez. Big responsibility. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of just, I think I'm too much of a newbie to kind of comment on that. Gotcha. I started, okay. I started working in February this year. Okay. So I'm just kind of starting to, to dip my toe into the water of the, of the city Wonderful. design space. Okay. Gotcha. But from it what is... I can tell, everything's going well. Good. <laughs> Good, man. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these look great. I love these little flowers. Nice. That looks great. Do you find, um, as far as just walking around your neighborhood, your town is branding and, uh, is it just at an all time high kind of same, similar to like typical cities throughout the world in terms of Sydney? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we, we punch up of our weight. Yeah. For our, yeah. For our design contributions, I'd say. Yeah. I always love credit. seeing. I always love seeing international things where it shows it's neat to see how design is doing in other parts of the world, you know, which is, it's just kind of refreshing to see because we're all in our own little bubble so much, you know, yeah. particularly over the last year. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Well, I guess great. that's, that's the benefit of what we're doing now, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Opening up the horizons for everybody, you know? Totally. Yeah. Oh, how do you feel about illustrating people? Scary. Or do you? Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> we can, we can, I agree as well. We'll get a, we'll get a yeah, there you go. There we go. <laughs> that's, ju that's just for you, Chris. There you go. That can, where can we put that? That can be right in there. <laughs> there we go. Now I think do, we're good. Do you, do you go that far with them or are you staying more in landscape and architecture? Like, oh, maybe one day. It's, yeah. it's, it's too scary now. I don't think I can yeah. do it. Yeah, exactly. You just you go into a whole like when you're when you're staying in this kind of thing, you're you have a a kind of safety net of I don't know of like creative flex that you can go into and people won't really question what you're doing. Whereas as soon as you yes. start to play with people, at oh. least for my uninitiated mind, mm -hmm. that's when it's like that doesn't look like a person. You're like, damn, it doesn't look like a person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the last person to enter that dip my my yeah. foot in that pool. I, <laughs> I cannot draw people for the life of me. Oh my God. It's so bad. 
your your little illustrations far better than anything I'm gonna do there <laughs> with the, your happy face there. But um, that's cool. That's really neat. Very nice. Yeah. And then what's your? Um, we'll probably get into that in a little bit too, as far as typography and things like that. But um, mm. you know, like your style here, kind of like does it? Do you find there's a good flexibility to to mess around with different fonts, or do you have certain families that you go to? You know, on the spot. Uh... Yes and no. I mean, again, yeah. similar to what I was saying before, I think I found that there's a there's a foundry called Pangram Pangram that I really like. Um, yes. And I found again, like similar to my color stuff, if I can, when I'm doing this these things like a couple times a week or every day or whatnot, the amount of steps that you can kind of cut out the process to save yourself time yeah. is a good thing. And so if I know I've got these colors here that I'm going to use every time, and I know I've got like a, a foundry that I can pick a type from. Yes then we're a lot closer to getting something that looks good than we would <laughs> if we had to go through that entire process that's every good. day. So I think that's, that's the kind of trick if you're going to start doing something where you're doing it day yeah. in, day out, is you've got to be able to kind of balance the amount of things that you're doing each day. Exactly. Yeah. And it's so neat to keep, like, it's so, so amazing to keep up with all the different font choices and things. And I love this idea. Oh, that was a... That was my bad for not putting that one on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> um, but finding these foundries that have such complementary fonts to maybe illustration designs and things like that. Mm. Like, oh man, when you see that perfect kind of harmony between uh, illustration and font choice, it yeah. really just takes it to a whole other level. Yeah, it just adds something else into it than you would have mm -hmm. if it was on its own. Yeah, exactly. I've kind of learned that through doing this stuff. It's like people respond a lot, a lot better to work that kind of has that extra added element to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have the opportunity to play with the word or whatever it is. Not that the word has to mean much, but as soon as you add that kind of the, the different forms of the type can kind of add something else into it. Yeah, that's true. I love those unexpected moments where it's like, <laughs> you're like, Oh, there's either a complete disconnect or some kind of yeah. something <laughs> meshing between the two, you know, it always looks well, that's good. The like it can completely change what it is. Right. That's the fun. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. You could have good question from nothing like it. Got a question from Rob. He asked, do you ever switch color spaces, meaning working between CMYK and RGB? Mm. Would, um, do you start oh, yeah, anywhere yeah. particularly? You're like, let's see where we're at. <laughs> I think these are... Ooh. Now we're CMYK. Oh, yeah, now we're ugly. There's that. Yuck. But, but again, this is, a, the, the, but this is a print. You know, I think that's the other thing too, is you got to think uh, it's, it's going to print, right? And so a lot of times when you show a client maybe something in RGB, because we're sharing like through the internet or whatever. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it is good to show them maybe the expectation of the CMYK just to play it safe, you know? Yeah. Well, you do, sometimes you'd fall into the world of pan tones and stuff as well. I guess it depends what it is that you're going That's into. That's true. Yeah. On the budget of the job and everything. So, I mean, if we I'm were going here, I'd, <coughs> you'd probably just, Ooh, okay, maybe not. Let's get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> But I know that feeling too. You like if you even want to like work in RGB all the way through just for the that vivid vibe and then yeah. do your best to either pick the PMS colors if it can be printed that way or, yeah. you know, show them the, the the difference between the two. My mouse has just died on me. Classic. Uh-oh. Revive it. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. What happened to my coolers? You have to bring them back. Let's see. Oh, are they in your libraries? Were they? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, that's true, Rob. When you see that, you're loving the RGB and then you switch to CMYK and it's like, yikes. Dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. Let's just pretend that never happened, shall we? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I see that all the time in like a Instagram post where someone has some vivid color and it's like, then they show you the, the CMYK yeah. version of it. <laughs> no thanks. It's like, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, yeah, that's, that's cool. a perfect description, really. It's just a kind of it sad, really is. just yeah. a bit of a shrug. Everything's just kind of falling exactly. down now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. We're back. We're back under control. There we go. Perfect. Let's pretend that didn't happen. So we're going to call this one again. We're going to do this the... The Melville Merlot, I believe, or the Perth, or we have we have two. So we have Mel the Melville Merlot, and then we'll have the Perth Pinot. So maybe maybe that's those are our our flavors include the city name, but we can even wow. like 
we can even go for a broader, more umbrella uh, brand name if we want okay. to do that. Yeah, that might be cool. All right, yeah. guys. So we need we need a we need maybe a a name for the overall brand, the the basically the brand of the wine. So we've got our we got our flavors. So give us some ideas for this Australian winery. What's the name going to be? So it, it's going to celebrate regions from all over. Yeah, maybe a, a bit of a kind of that Mosey River coming from behind the house and maybe something in the background might be kind of cool. Yeah. Chateau Surf, that's a good one. I like that one, <laughs> so that's good. Got a few more ideas coming in there. So uh, a question from KT, how long would you say it took you to start kind of to develop this style? Was uh, this something you always had or did you just say, no. let's, let's play around? Here it is. Yeah, more that. <laughs> really? Where um, do you think it came from? It's a good question, really. I don't know. I did, I did used to do these kind of similar um, building-y ones. Like yes. you can do, what is it? The older style where you kind of just do more of a blocky yes. bit of a house. Yeah. Which was a bit, bit of a trend for a while. Mm -hmm. um, like that kind of thing. And then you yeah. pick that. Oh, like that kind of thing. And then you can just kind of like have fun playing around with different yeah. versions of it. Um, yeah. Like you can just pull it out. You can drop it down, you know, follow your heart. There you go. <laughs> Um, and then so I used to do like your idea. Yeah, I used to do similar things like that. But I think what you're lacking with these kind of ones is your like the depth that you get from these. I think as soon as you sure. add in a kind of um, like a block bit of black, like these these styles would traditionally have like that kind of thing for the mirrors. Is what you often yes. see. Yep. Not the windows, sorry, not the mirrors. Okay. Um, and I think when you have it like that, like you get the idea, but you don't really get the the depth to it. Yeah. And so if you were to just kind of pick that up and I don't know, if you bring that in or something, mm -hmm. and then that goes to your black and then peel that off. And then you can kind of clip those two together. So you're just left with that little outline. Yeah. And then you kind of get that shadow. Thank God for Pathfinder. Thank God for Pathfinder. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my next t-shirt I got to make here. That's a great idea. <laughs> that's um, great. Yeah. And then this so then just kind of kept expanding from there? Yeah. And then it's just kind of how do you build a scene out of it? Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that there's, that does, doesn't need to really be too much of a reason. It's almost just the love of like doing these things, you know? I bet you are a huge Lego fan. How did you know? <laughs> oh, dude, every well, every one of us is like, please, if you if you were a huge Lego fan as a kid, say say yes in chat, please. I mean, like, I think that's the uh, most stories I hear from folks who are graphic designers now love yeah. Legos as kids, and at one point thought of getting into architecture, and then found it was too difficult. So they're that's like, so funny. Let's get into here. You know? Yeah, exactly. How can I do this but without any maths? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> or mi very minimal math, right? Yeah. Like all, all I want to know is all I got to do. I want to half packaging. this, and I'm gonna go slash two. There we go. Math. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Here's some here's some names we have. So we've got we have weekend winers. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Like I like Love this that idea. Like picking kind of, up on the alliteration. Yeah. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Uh, Swan River Winery. We have that. Elegant. Or vineyard. We have Hang Ten Estates. We have Riptide Vineyards or Vintage. Uh, Coral Reef Vineyards. Mm. Okay. Kind of nice. That's cool. Australian reference. Yep. Got a few of them in the house there. Very cool. Let's see what else we've got here. Yep. Oh, there we go. Paco knows what we're talking about with the Legos. <laughs> 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 a, few, a few people agreeing on the architecture thing as well, too. Yeah. So funny. I love it. I think, oh, yeah, oh, this is looking good. I mean, someone who doesn't know anything about architecture, it's one of those ones that like is so much fun to just look at, but mm -hmm. you don't really like you're happy to look at it. 
oh yeah and let, then you let go the like professionals do their thing and yeah like how on that. earth did they do that and you're like yeah. <laughs> i'm just putting a logo i'm just putting a logo together right yeah <laughs> quick quick question have you saved this yet i have, have now you saved your file <laughs> Let's do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm. That's my stickler, man. I, I, I do that all the time. I get so carried away with something and I forget to do a save. Oh, yeah. That's the worst. I'm generally thing. not too bad. I think I've just forgotten to do it now. I've actually got yeah, into the habit exactly. where like just doing Command S is like a weird Twitch I have. Oh, so I'm totally. just like every five seconds, it's just boom, Command S, Command S. Command exactly. S. Especially after um, like let's say you finish the house, right? Or a, a little there's like a little something you've just completed. There's that natural instinct to do command S, right? Mm. <laughs> or at least yeah. you hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, you're, you're, yeah, Carol says untitled. <laughs> or I know that's the best, the best. Wallaby Way Winery. Ooh, I like that one. So that's kind of cool, KT. I like that one. Is this the one person who keeps doing alliteration or is, is everyone? Oh, no, we got a on? few. There's a few of them there. That's great. That's a great one. I do, like, yeah, like I was saying before, I think alliteration is just such a, a good cheat. And so I think yes. everyone's picked up on that. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's a it's a natural go to for a lot of us that aren't professional copywriters. Yeah. But like, why not, right? Exactly. Yeah. That looks great. That looks good. <laughs> Untitled booze number thirty two final dash final. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to go here. That's good. So would you even would you even sketch anything out first? Are you are you a fan of that before doing anything here? No, I think going back to the fact that. that I can't draw like whenever I try and actually sketch something, I'd more just get annoyed that it's not looking like how I wanted it to look. Okay. I think, gotcha. To be honest. And your speed's pretty like a, a few people are commenting on just the speed of where we're at already with this. And it's like, I think that's another thing is like, if you can do it this fast and just play in this exploration phase, yeah, maybe this is your sketching in a way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. No, I think it yeah. is. I think you're right. And, and little things like just how you just move the trees around. It's like I, at a certain point, if you sketched yeah, it, it had a, you know, it, it can't do that weird. primarily that quickly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I can like before I just moved it because it was overlapping this stroke there. So it was looking like it yes. had a double stroke. Mm -hmm. And now it doesn't. Yep. And are you, I haven't even looked yet. Are you building anything in layers just yet? Or are you right now just things are certain in order based on arrangement front and back? Just in arrangement. I, I should do layers probably. Um, at the moment, I've got this background is sitting in a cupping mask, so I can just kind of control that a bit more. Nice. This house probably should be in a layer, but the benefit yes. of then having this background and its cupping mask is that I can just Good. select um, yeah. that front house if I wanted to. Oh, I'm glad we just brought that up because like this is a great thing to look at and see how what he's already arranged to work together and grouping or putting it in the clipping mask is a way of having it editable and easy to move around in one piece, which yeah. is really nice. Yeah, that looks great. That looks good. Yeah, I probably, cool. yeah. Layers layers are very good. Layers are useful. But I know, <laughs> yeah. You often just kind of forget about it. Like if, if I was going back and making more changes, then you'd kind of go back and mm -hmm. then kind of lay them all up so you can easily just jump between them. But then you yeah. find that like you might lock one and you might lock the other and you kind of get stuck with it. Whereas when you're working with this, like you just kind of create layers within the layer, I guess. If you have this grip yeah. as your one and then you've got that as your back and then um, working all the way back here. It Perfect. kind of does that for you. There you go. There you go. And, uh, and go as you? far as uh, line weight with your illustrations, do you kind of keep a certain ratio alive or have you done things with super broad, you know, um, strokes and or super light or are you keeping in this zone of like the weight right now feels good to me. Like I'm just, I, I, that's why I'm questioning. Yeah. Um, I do. I do change around a bit, but at the same time, I also keep a bit of regularity to it. So yeah. I yeah. mean, to demonstrate, it is it is crazy the big the um the difference that you can make to it. Yeah, yeah. Line. Jake had mentioned here uh, as a graphic designer who can't draw to save his life. <laughs> uh, he he appreciates this aesthetic very well. Yeah, I, I I'm the same way, man. Yeah, I really do so feel the same. This is kind of ah. Oh, there you go. You can do a quick test and see where you're at with it, right? Our smiley face man is now. Yeah, I think. Maybe, looking worse for wear the, the but... joke, maybe the joke's gone now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's crazy the difference they can kind of have like when you're working with this really thin um, yeah key line kind of thing it i don't it's just different 
like it's it's really light it's just kind of lets the fills do their work and then when you go heavy you're like it doesn't leave anything to the imagination i guess you can kind of True. really see the, you're right. the blocks of it so um, i think your happy medium there is like right there yeah. on the first slide you know also too um you got to make sure as well um a printer might not take that middle one because that black line is so faint it yeah. could fill with all yeah, the colors true. surrounding it you know yeah. uh victoria had a gr great question she wanted to know can you ask jack how he learned all of the shortcuts in illustrator i i think i know the answer but what how did you do it i slowly i mean i don't i i think there's just like key ones you should be picking up rather than others i don't i wouldn't consider myself a whiz at them i think there's people who are amazing and just know every single little thing but yeah. like ones that you that i use often at least so like i mean option drag not really a shortcut but pretty crucial sure um what else have we got and if option you put, shift drag you know for the for the uh, yeah. to duplicate on a straight line yeah yep. always using shift if you're moving something along exactly um if you draw a shape and just plop it in front and then select the whole thing and do command seven then yep. you'll do a clipping mask with that and then it's going to stay within that um what else is useful command y for outline oh the wireframe yes the wireframe have but you ever found when... have you ever found doing this with someone and they didn't know what it was and they're like wait what did you yeah. just do to get the wire <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> command y everybody that should be your first one truly especially when i'm kind of doing these these things yeah. where it all depends on everything snapping in together so even just then when mm -hmm. i just checked it i probably should yes. have done this earlier because this there's a little error that yep. should be in title. Yep. Always a great, that's where you get to see kind of the wireframe hidden components in the background. It's always good. And while it might not make this huge, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I just find too, like anything that you do on repeat, just go and find the shortcut. Even if it's looking at the shortcut in the pull down menu or mm. online somewhere or on some creative cloud, you know, YouTube channel, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can watch a ton of these things that are all geared towards shortcuts, but I find it might mean you just kind of, you know, sticking with it for a while, but then it becomes second nature and you're seeing mm. how Jack's doing that right now. It's all second nature to you now. Yeah. I mean, if the next time you go to do one of these things, like, I mean, group, mm -hmm. yeah, that's another good one. When you just go to do it and you go to click it from the menu, it is just there. Yeah. So it's yeah. just a matter of kind of acknowledging that. And then every time you do yeah. it, if you slowly start to realize that you're doing it. There you go. It's right there for you, you know? It's right there for me. Yeah. yeah that's another Create good one. Outlines. Group, command G to group oh. and then shift command G to on group stuff. Perfect. Perfect. Let's go back here and see what else we got. Yeah. So, oh, someone had asked for packaging design. Do you need to learn Substance Painter and Cinema 4D? Not, and I think it's everyone kind of followed up with Illustrator's really your packaging powerhouse. And now with yeah. Dimension as well, it's just a way now you could take Dimension and turn anything into a fantastic composition and rendering. Um, but for me, particularly too, like Illustrator's 100% my go to on yeah. the side. Um, in, in fact, most printers are just going to want. Uh, an AI or a PDF based on yeah. the artwork you're creating. I mean, yeah, we're going to be having a think at Dimension tomorrow, but it is ridiculously powerful in terms of just giving a, oh, a quick mock-up of what you're working through. I'm I'm learning more on it every time I open it up, and um, uh, I've rebuilt like every single case study on my website to <laughs> Dimension stuff because it's it, like photography for those of us that don't have the skills um, or the setups or the studio. Um, yep. it can, it can cost a lot. So this, this dimension has really saved the day in a lot of different ways for us with packaging. Maybe let's plump another little house down there, shall we? Let's see. We got a question. I'm always confused. What formats are best to send finished designs to clients? Can you please advise? So I'm assuming for like, for logo packages like there's tons of great con um, content out there to figure out what but you know ask your client what in particular yeah. they want to have and primarily like i don't know what you do but like i put together like an ai package a pdf package and then we do export for screens and do like pngs psds yeah. and jpegs yeah. um export for screens on illustrator is probably your number one export friend right like it gives you yeah. every way to do it do you have any uh any specifics when you're sending stuff out is it more about just asking what in particular they need yeah it's more just what they want because everyone has a different yes. assignment yeah so yeah. some people might want to actually be able to edit it because they have the program some might 
you know, just want the the drop and go PNGs or whatnot, or it's just mm -hmm. kind of a matter of seeing what they need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a, a good little recap here, what we're doing for those of you who've joined us. Uh, we are in day one of our packaging session here on Adobe Live with Jack Forrest from Australia. He is doing a winery label uh, kind of exploration right now. We've kind of named it, um, we have we we got to pick the actual name here. It. Yeah, <laughs> we have some flavor <laughs> names. Uh, we will, but he's well on his way in creating the illustration here. So uh, there's still some time to kind of help us name that final winery name here. But uh, Jack's been putting together the first one here, and it's based off of a really great illustration style that he's been doing. And we're having some fun, kind of going through the process, checking out different processes and things here. Uh, workflow is always a great thing to see how other designers work when it comes to things like this, huh? I, I, yeah. What, what do, you, do you have certain inspiration things that you go to while you're designing or through the week that kind of keep you inspired? Where do you go? Uh, I mean, Behance obviously is a great one with mm -hmm. all the different projects that are on there. The fact that everything's curated is a really nice touch to just only see yes. um, some of the good stuff, some of the great stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's really any, web, any other external websites or designers that you kind of tend to follow that kind of inspire you throughout your uh, work process not really i don't i don't really seek out anything in particular i just kind of see whatever comes along like instagram okay. is kind of useful just for random stuff behance is useful for random stuff yep you just kind of see what happens yeah exactly cool kt had asked a bit of a random question. We love those here. <laughs> no problem there, KT. But what advice uh, do you have on troublesome clients? Have you faced that yet, Jack? Rough. Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about your troublesome client there, KT. We'd love to hear. Um, we Maybe we can help you there. Maybe folks from chat can chime in on that too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the colors are looking great. Love the. We got our river. Oh, yeah. Pop in this. Got to get this. Got to get the sun in there. <laughs> Love it. Are you starting to think where you're gonna put some of the the type at this point too, or is it all up above, or are we gonna incorporate it into other elements here? What are you thinking? I don't know. Maybe we change the whole thing. <laughs> Maybe we do something different. I don't know. Like you could. Yeah. An idea I had before was that you could do a kind of, what if we make like a wine glass? Mm-hmm. A wine glass? Mm. There you go. A wine glass? Um, yeah, if we kind of did something like that, maybe. And then we just yeah grab it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah love this idea and that's the beauty of this too like just you you're, you're basically putting pictures and puzzles together in this way and that you're right you just built the scene but that's not set in stone you could do whatever yeah. you want with this you know let's start thinking about it maybe we'll come back to that later <laughs> yeah there you go i know just but a nice thing to get like it's like a brain dump right you're like let me just yeah. get that out of my system and do it <laughs> uh let me see what else is Yes, Voodoo Val was mentioning to you, like, have I ever dealt, oh, a lifetime of troublesome clients. But I think the goal <laughs> is, the goal is to not have troublesome clients. You know, like, I think with everyone you have, my first instinct is to ask, what did I do wrong? You know, I think that's the smart way to look at it. Don't always just imagine it was something they did. You know, you're the, you're the, you're, you're holding their hand through this process. You should be walking them through what it's like to work with the designer, what it's like to work with the creative. So in a lot of ways, you should really be like looking out for both parties and making sure the process you put together works. And if it doesn't change it the next time, you know, um, yeah. maybe it's in your contract, maybe it's in your agreement. Um, I change my process almost every time I start a new job because you learn something from the last one, you know? Yeah. yeah. What are the colors you like to use the most? Is, I think you, we've, we're seeing them right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Jack's gonna copyright these. These this is this is Jack Forest yellow, <laughs> Jack Forest green. <laughs> Add the hexes. Mm -hmm. There you go. See. Yeah, that looks great. 
And also, too, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, we encourage you to come check us out over on Behance right now. They, we got our chat going. We'll be able to talk with you guys. It's a much better experience watching it over here on the Behance network. But also, too, like, man, I'm sure you've seen as well. There are so many great just workshops and seminars and boot camps on Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, hours and hours of great stuff for you guys to look at. I've been digging deep into a lot of some old ones as well, kind of getting yeah. sharpening my skills with, particularly with dimension and some other stuff. Um, even when you like, just kind of go like, wow, I know Illustrator can do this, but I don't know where to go. Yeah. Pop on over to the Creative Cloud YouTube channel and search, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so what are, we, what are we building here? We're making a bad cloud at the moment. <laughs> 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 you heard Tune it first folks more. <laughs> we're making a very very bad cloud there you go ah there you go it's i always think cloud. of toy story when i build clouds you yeah. know the the white the real white puffy clouds on the blue background yeah i love that yep let's see katie said i have a client that is very micromanagey they make their own drawings and won't allow for real creativity or oh, logical man. ideas oh that's a tough one I mean, it sound like a client, does it? It's not exactly. <laughs> and I think, you know, KT in a situation like that, a lot of times you might, if you're so far in and you're there, I think, um, Steve had mentioned it earlier, you know, you have that talk with them and, and just explain that this is not, this is not working well. We have to make this better. And if they don't listen or if they're not open to the kind of conversation, just finish the project, exit out, take your lesson you know, and, and fit, find ways to not let that happen again. I think when you, when we as designers show clients that they're hiring us as the, the experts, it kind of changes the whole conversation. You kind of agree? Yeah. Jack? That's, yeah. yeah, it just depends on the matter of how you start that conversation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, see, now we're getting happy clouds. We're getting happy clouds. <laughs> uh, we're not quite there yet. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris has a great idea. Let's just call the winery Bad Cloud Winery. <laughs> and you're going to be like, and I'm going to own the fact that our clouds are just bad. <laughs> bad day. Yep. There you go. Oh there, I know sometimes it's like, do you ever, it's fr so frustrating when you have the look in your mind and you're like, it's just circles. I know, I don't want to make circles. clouds, but then you're like, what is going on here? <laughs> I find if you have one job. one big one and then the, the other two are much smaller, you get a little more variety. So like keep that middle one super big and make those other ones like half the size and yeah, you might I get like a little bit more. Yeah. I there mean, would go. you normally do the halfway split? I'm trying to remember how I think. Yeah, like, you know, like I think just like, there you go. Yeah. And then like, you know, sometimes, and then you can round the bottom a little bit. But sometimes having them taper uh, not cutting it at the halfway, maybe just shy of halfway. Yeah. There you go. Like, yeah. And having them, Boom. and then you can always round those corners. Yep. Boy, if you guys aren't Pathfinder users, I, I would heavily recommend um, just search for Pathfinder on Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube. This is a lifesaver. I mean, this and Shape Builder are just, you know, that's Game how games. you. That's, I think you build ninety percent of your 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 graphics and illustrations yep. with Pathfinder, right? I mean, there is now as well, um, one of the newer tools is, where is it? The shape one? Shape shape tool? Yeah, the shape builder one. Yes. This baby. There you go. Yeah. So you can just kind of click on there and then you pop it's out with so shape. It's so great. Yep. It's like live, it's almost like live Pathfinder happening at the yeah. same time. <laughs> that looks great. Oh, yeah, yeah I love it. Crowd. Christine even said it. The designer is the expert. I think it's the same thing. You never, you wouldn't go to your doctor and be like, no, let me tell you how to, <laughs> how it's done. Right. Like, and I think the more conversations you have and the more you can actually present yourself as the, the authority in that they're coming to you for a reason, you know, yeah. but make sure you got your, you know, your ducks in a row and you're, you're basically, you're doing everything right. I, I think I love getting into the, the structure of like, the first few conversations with a new client, that's where you can really kind of figure out if they're going to be the right client or not, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Building a relationship and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is looking good. All right. So we know our name. 
for the for the this this one's going to be the we'll call this one the the Perth Pinot if you want to, or we can okay. call it the Melville Mer Merlot. But let's get that let's get that let's get that uh winery name. Let me scroll back up and see if I can find what we had back here at the beginning. If we had anything, oh, well, you guys have been super talkative today. This is great. <laughs> blah blah winery. There's a good mm. one. <laughs> Red Rue Ranges. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking, Jack? Any ideas? Any anything? In, were you think? Did you have anything in mind prior to this, or what do you think? Um, what do we got? I mean, you could do something about the wine, the wine glassy thing. Oh yeah. Um, is it like a? Is it, is it like, like a, a full a full glass? A oh yeah. Glass of something. Full glass. That might be kind of cool. I like that it's almost forming a window or like a portrait. You know. There's something yep. cool there. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get, and then we got where maybe the neat thing is, is what if each one is based on a different cottage? Like, you know, cause you're going to probably explore different architecture things and stuff. But what yep. if it's like, you know, cottage winery or cottage farms or something yeah. like that, you know, that Not could be neat. Cheese. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or from the cottage or, um, Give us something with cottage there or or something that reflects the fact that he's probably gonna have some fun with a few more buildings and a few more little homes but it's kind of based it feels very vineyardy right like that's kind of the whole vibe that we're trying to shoot for let's see if anybody's got something there what else do we got let's see looking to see if anybody else has got some good names they should be coming crystal glass winery that's a cool one a uh, question from Cheryl. Why do you use color palettes in CC library instead of swatches? Ah, oh, because I think you, you know it's that. It's always there. Yes. So if I was to make a, a new document now, I'm starting fresh. Mm -hmm. Hello. There. there they Instead are. of having to go into swatches and kind of do that new every time, it's just always yeah. there. And yeah. then that follows over into other programs as well. So if I wanted those same colors in InDesign or in Dimension or whatnot, then I've always just got them here. Yeah. Think of it as your your little style guide that goes with you anywhere in the Adobe apps, right? It's yeah. He, he's taken the time to curate these colors and having them in libraries not only means is it available everywhere, but how about when you collaborate with someone, right? Like yeah. I, I don't know if you've used the, the the collaboration tool in libraries, but it's like it's so fantastic. The whole team knows exactly what that color is, and no one has to ask, right? It's like yeah. What's the what's that gray Jack was using? Well, guess what. It's right it's there. there. <laughs> exactly. Man, that CC libraries has been another game changer of the last few years. It's just unbelievable control. So much fun. Yep. Let's see what else we got here. Winery name. You want to sell wines to the Aussies, first of all. So use terms that they know and make it fun. <laughs> Hence the surfing idea or ruse or wombats. Yep. yep. That might be cool too. Yep. How, but I guess too, like, how does that, does it, if you're, if you're, if, if you're doing it for the Aussie market, you know, should it have those in there or should it just be celebrating other, it could celebrate other things as well, which is kind of cool. You know, true. you could do whatever you want, really. I don't know if I should correct Let's your see. pronunciation of Australia. Oh, did I, what did I say? <laughs> Aussie. Aussie. <laughs> 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 all right so we're building our second one here it looks like let's go number two good all right and in right off the bat do you have an idea of what this is going to be or are you pulling it from one of your other uh inspirational ones there or what are you um doing? what's the thought not really i was thinking if there's like a kind of balcony sort of thing oh there you on. go okay so this not one's got a bit of a view right, but... i like that Yeah, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna take your advice there, Steve. We're gonna look at Aussie wines and see what we got. <laughs> nice, tons of good ones. All right, cool. So I got that window open. Let's see. Research. So this idea here is gonna be the second variety. Yeah. Perfect. And you're kind of, I like this idea of like almost having a balcony window view at the top. Oh, everyone, oh, 
So now, now we're getting some recommendations on what kind of wines to try. All right. Mm. <laughs> Is the connoisseur going to come in with the tasting? Yes, cabinet? exactly. I know. If, we can, <laughs> if we can include wine tasting with the live Then we're getting somewhere. Then we're getting somewhere good. Then we'll be like, it might be a little early for you, but I, I, I don't have a problem <laughs> joining in, right? I That's mean, great. 5 a.m., 5 p.m. What's, what's the, the difference? difference? Really? Yeah, exactly. It's drink o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see. What else do we have here from you guys? Yeah, so everyone's been talking a little bit about saving the color libraries. Definitely cool. Always great. Even just the idea of like your your assets, the things like if you lock finish your logo lockup, mm. right? Like throw that in libraries, have it there. So when you are in dimension you have it ready to go. You can add it to the, the, you know, if you need to use it for something totally different. Yep. Um, I, I'm building, on, yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm building more in that drag and drop dimensions changed everything because it's like, I've never was that person that was doing a lot of stuff in libraries until having to move yep. things from illustrator and stuff over there. Now all of a yep. sudden I'm getting super, super organized with the um, cloud libraries and having them in folders, having them in clients. Uh, yep. It's fantastic really you works nice preaching to the choir mm -hmm. it's really really good and then to, to have the collaboration going too like and just be able to share the assets that you're working on something with the team i mean it's literally like you're right there and it's just fantastic yeah so this one's obviously gonna with a balcony and something else kind of unique here with it we're gonna have to probably make sure that's part of the name here as well. <laughs> <laughs> something terrace or patio Ooh. or something like that would be kind of cool. There you go. Match up the height of this thing. Looking good. Yep, I'm, I'm assuming this is this winery is going to go international once it takes over in Australia. Of course. Exactly. Of course, no doubt. Mm hmm. We're already thinking. We're already thinking of that too, Steve. Don't worry. <laughs> we're going. We we're it. thinking. We're thinking globally. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love it. Wonderful. What else? Any other questions you guys have on on either Illustrator tips, process, what's what Jack's building right now? Go ahead and throw that into chat, and we can see how that's doing. So we're on label two. And the idea here is to just kind of get a ton of different operations and feels here. So once we start playing around with dimension tomorrow, we can start seeing how things look, you know, have you always wanted to do packaging design? Is this something uh, that you've always done or something new? Um, I mean, in where, where the studio that I work in, I don't do exclusively packaging design. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a, a broader design studio. Um, yes. So I like the idea that you can kind of do every bit of the package. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so I don't, I wouldn't say like exclusively <laughs> a, um, a packaging, but it is, I do think it's a really fun part of the process. Like I was saying before, yes, how sure. it completely changes that experience. Yeah. Like you can yeah. have a great product and terrible packaging and then it's no good. Yeah. And I, I think it's a natural progression for anybody that's like even just interested in it as already doing a lot of maybe brand work. Um, yeah. Gosh, it's just such a fun thing to kind of consider all the angles, all the perspectives of what you have and you know, how that's how that works. And um, I'm a big fan of just, you know, walking the aisles of your local store and just getting, seeing what stands out, what, yeah. what kind of branding and what kind of packaging design is really making a, a, an impact when you walk through there. Cause that's really what we're doing here. You know, we're as much as we love the fact that we're artists, if we're doing this for clients and for companies, we're really salespeople, you know? Yep. I hate to say it, but <laughs> <laughs> sad but true. It's sad but true. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Do you find um have you created any kind of um your artwork in libraries? Have you saved your trees? Have you saved your chimneys? Have you done it? that as far as that far or that's a good point yet. i haven't done that no i probably mm -hmm. should though i've just been there kind of go. like working within the same space and and moving them around okay there you but go no i probably should do that all right i'll take a percentage of that when when that yeah. sells, sells you or something well deserved 
But yeah, so now we've kind of got all the assets from the original one. Now we can just kind of start plonking exactly. them into the second one. Yep. There you go. Getting our flowers going in there. This is great. And what's neat too is like that. Now, do you play with texture at all? Have you have you gotten into that as well with your your illustrations? I haven't, but we could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, when you add <laughs> when you when you start to add grain to stuff, it does make a, a quite a big difference again. Yes. Like if we do that. I mean, that's one way to do it in the in the Photoshop settings and kind of play Correct. with that. Correct. Yeah. But the, I mean, the downside is that when you're working in this kind of like fast sketching form, um, yes. as soon as you add in that kind of heavy uh, raster stuff, then it, it messes around with how quick your computer's processing and whatnot. Correct. So yep. if I ever did do that, then I'm kind of staying with that till the very last moment, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's like, just get the work done, enjoy what you have, design yep. the, 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 all of the different assets. And yep. then you can just, any, and, and in fact, you can even mess around with it on maybe like on Photoshop or, and now even dimension allows you to add a little grain and stuff or metallic or whatever. Yeah. When yeah. You're bringing things in yeah, exactly. and it's a quick little way to test the waters and see if it's working out pretty cool. You know, man. Yeah. We do got a, we got some, we got some wine aficionados in the, in the chat today. Oh, it's kind of cool. I've only I've made it as far as New Zealand. I have not gone to Australia. Oh, I'm so out. it's I know definitely on my on my list. There we go. Comes. So what are you gonna do? I'm I'm almost thinking too, you should have like one element per piece that maybe is exclusive to the piece, you know? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you know, like like using all the shared assets of your design vibe here, and then there's yep. maybe even yeah. Have you done Easter egg kind of stuff at all with your illustrations? <laughs> oh, have I? I don't know. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> that should be a secret if I did, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I don't think I have though. <laughs> Cause that would be kind of neat too. If it's a, a, something cool about mm. the particular variety, you, you hide a little something in there that has. That okay. Little, what have we, have you still got that page easy. open? What have you got? Let's what are see. Our... Yeah. So, so we've got, let's go back to this one here. We're going to look at, um, let's see. Okay. So let's give the first one. We wanted it to be, we'll make that one, the Perth Pinot, we'll call it. This one. Okay. Yes. So let's go to, Perth, um, what would be a good thing to look up? Perth um, iconic icons. I'm trying to think what would be something unique. Popular icons of Perth. So you've obviously there's, got your- There's, there's a little um, boat shed. I think that's- Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a ton of great things for the city skyline. That's kind mm -hmm. of working. Uh, let's go to images and see what else we can find here. Yeah, I'm seeing the skyline, the trees. Gosh, is it? Um, what else do I see? I'm seeing a like a swan, Swan yeah. River. Oh, yeah. maybe so. Maybe a little Swan's swan. Good. It's not a person. I think it's we can, close we can though, get isn't swan it? in it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, folks, we're gonna see how Jack is gonna draw a swan oh, no. <laughs> live I on Adobe. <laughs> I don't know if we want to go down that path. Exactly. Um, I how think too. Let's see what else do they have that would be unique. I'm seeing a lot of. It's definitely got a lot of the cottage, a lot of the the vibe. I'm seeing the um, piers, a lot of piers on water. Um, Maybe it could even be their flag in a way, if you want to do something graphic. Um, let's see. We can do a bad attempt at a swan. Let's see how There you go. go. Oh, good. We're getting a swan. I love it. We're getting a swan, guys. <laughs> We're getting a swan. <laughs> oh, no. That's perfect. That's a bad idea. Wait, so Christine asked about Christine asked about organizing your assets in libraries. Yeah, groups or, you know, you just basically do, you can do name your libraries and they can be based on, uh, you name it. Just imagine how you would, how you're gonna build a filing cabinet of any of your resources. So like I do it based on clients. So I'll make a library based on that or um, on aesthetics or like, let's say you've built like your pastel palettes or something and, and maybe you wanna do a library group that is called pastels. So that way, 
whatever your, I think it's custom to you, really. Wouldn't you agree, Jack? Yeah. Like, how 100%. do you work? Yeah. yeah. Whatever things Ooh. you use the most or however you want to do it. Yeah. Voodoo Val wants a dragon. She, <laughs> she wants oh, to see it. Jesus, a... <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Adobe Live. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's many fine parrots in Aussie. So maybe maybe our second one's going to get a parrot on there. That'd be kind of fun to play around yeah. with. This is working. This is looking good, dude. You got it going. You ever use the puppet? Um, the puppet more. What is it? The uh, I tool? don't. I have before. Yeah, it kind of. It will. It, it. You can add a joint to something, and they will actually bend the Illustrator art. It's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Yeah, birds. Okay, so birds will be our set. Uh, will definitely be maybe our common hidden. Our hidden little Easter egg will all be bird related. Thank you, Steve. We got that. That That's, sounds great. That yeah, I'm looking something. even on the even on, <laughs> even on the Perth even on the Perth flag, I'm seeing it. It's that that's good to know. So we're 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 staying on we're staying true to everything there, which is great. I we're in dangerous that. territory here with I know, birds. I know. What are we yeah. doing? Do you ever do do you, now where would you go for a quick little? Would you just do like a Google search for Something if you're if your mind's boggled and you're trying to figure yeah. out. What's, I'm yeah, currently there looking go. at swans on. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> currently searching for swan icons. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully in the style of your artwork. <laughs> yep. There you go. Not gonna be All right. Oh, I'm seeing something. I'm seeing something happen there. That looks good. So we're gonna have a swan on this guy. That should be our little hidden Easter egg. I love that idea. Very cool. Let's see what else we got from the chat here. What else is there? Do, 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 do. We got to get that name going for it still. Sure. I'm going to look through here and see what else we did. There you go. That looks pretty neat. Got something going on there nicely. Dangerous territory drawing something with the pencil. I know, I know. We'll live with this. <laughs> I love, um, you know, some of the best things to watch are everyone's approach of the pen tool and how they and how they use it. It's such a neat tool. It's like the most freehand and like all up to you control of Illustrator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that looks great. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, there's some good stuff, like some good good comments coming through. Yeah, puppet warp. That's the one I was trying to remember. Yeah, I, I, that's been a, a. I've been trying it out on certain things, particularly if like mascots and characters. It's kind of unique if you want to put them in different poses and things like that. It's kind yeah. of cool, you know. Yep. So we're in the middle of doing some wine label packaging design with Jack Forrest here. Jack's joining us from Australia. Well, now what time is it there? What are you at? Six -ish? Uh, it is 6 13. 6 13 in the morning. Look at this guy. What a trooper coming in <laughs> super early for everybody here. Um, and we're going to just kind of, we're working through a few label designs today. We've got about 45 minutes to go. Uh, kind of zooming along here. We're on our second one. And uh, what we're thinking here is we're going to kind of, drop in a little bit of an Easter egg in each one of these uh, pieces here as something paying a little bit of uh, respect to the city that we're if, doing here. So we've got a, we <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we've got something crazy coming out of the river, man. What's going on here? <laughs> we have ourselves a swan. There we go. Ah, look at that. We just <laughs> add that beautiful little, I love it. Perfect. Uh, and I love the hint. It's um, like maybe have it coming out of the, is it coming out of the water? Is that the idea think so. you're thinking of yeah. doing? Maybe like putting it midway and then like that way, all you have to do is the, the neck and then you're, you're done. Exactly. It's all about <laughs> what Simplicity you can do. Make it as best. small as possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it is an Easter egg, right? So That's like, so there bad. you go. I love it. <laughs> Can we change the name to Bad Swan Wineries? Yes, everyone will remember how about this. It's, how about it's back here? <laughs> oh, even better. Look at that. I love it. Hey, it's a Where's Waldo. <laughs> Why not, yeah. right? Yep. He's a little snaky looking, with but that. that's okay. Okay, good. <laughs> so we are good. Hit save. <laughs> we don't want to lose that. We don't want to lose that swan. <laughs> sure of that. <laughs> uh, so funny. There we go. 
Cool. And then um, let's look and see. So we've got, we still got to name this thing. Let's see. Okay. I got to go back to um, Aussie Wine Names. I'm going to get some ideas of what else is out there. Let's see. We need your help, chat. What else can we do? Best Australian. Let's see. Com complete guide to the wines by style. That's a good one. We'll take a look here. Are you a wine drinker? Jack? I'm a wine drinker. I wouldn't say good. I'm okay. a wine enthusiast, but I, I know. That's have good. been known to frequent wine mm -hmm. from time to time. Good. All right. <laughs> Anything in particular? You're you're our Australia ambassador here. So, like, what 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 should we name this? What give us some ideas? What what's uh -huh. what's a cool vibe that would work nicely? Because as I'm looking here, I'm seeing a lot of good stuff. But like, you're our expert, man. <laughs> uh, a lot of responsibility. <laughs> I know. Come on, copyright and design at the same time. You're gonna win buku points here. <laughs> Let's. Hmm. I mean, I still like the kind of full glass kind of thing. Yes. If you have mm -hmm. some kind of like overflowing glass. Yep. I don't know. It's got, it. it's got everything in it. Let me see. When all else fails, we go to the thesaurus. That's always That's a great. Very when good. you're doing some a bad copywriters trick book. Oh, Alliteration exactly. And thesaurus.com. Yep. So let's see. Overflow. I'm going to see if there's anything else here. Oh, so we have runoff. We have, let's see, oh. um, what else do we have? Spillway, overloading. Oh. Uh, dis no, some of these are like, let's see, pour down, uh, overload. Ooh, overload's kind of cool. That's a bit intense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we want this is that to be foreshadowing, or what? What's yeah, going on there? I know. Yeah. So we, <laughs> but but also, I think what's cool too is your 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 illustrations are basically showing a bit of a of a story right we're we're having mm -hmm. some we're talking about the the city we're talking about these little buildings we're setting a we're setting a, a mood here with these things um what's another word that would be something really cool for we said uh let's see glass overflow what else can we do here spy glass that's kind of cool um gazing um windscreen showcase because it's a, or how about looking glass what about looking glass Ooh. Ooh. i like that that's kind of neat okay let's get a little more insight on that looking glass as a mirror usually uh so it's kind of like a re it's obviously about reflection so i think what's neat is you're kind of like you're doing that with these things do you guys like looking glass what do you think Oh, Christine even mentioned that before we did. Look at that. Great minds. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> I think we kind of, and, and it's very subtle. I think it's, it feels like it goes with your, with your illustration. And particularly if we bring in the wine glass, mm -hmm. that's kind of nice. All right. I think we have our name. Perfect. And we've got our things. Whoop, 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 winery. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tongue twister. <laughs> there you go. Perpetual glass. That's a good Ooh. one, Steve. I do like the way that like when you see a wine label, how mm -hmm. many times, and I'm sure everybody can agree to this, you, you buy it off of the label design, particularly yeah. not even designers, right? 100%. I mean, that's what else do you have to go off? You can't pop it open and try it. So yep. <laughs> you're basing it on the copyright. You pretend to read the label and know what it means. And then you exactly. look at the packaging and then you move on. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh, you know what's neat, dude, is the way you're designing these two. They might look good. Um, In a row. You can almost create a whole cityscape. So when the wines are together, yeah. there's this continual flow. Yeah, you can. I like the way we go on. I think you were you were you were planning that, correct? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> that looks good. So again, that wireframe, one of the best ways to kind of see all of your artwork and how yeah. lines are butt up against each other. Do you Everything's keep on perfect. do you keep um like snap to grid or snap to point on or are you are you a fan of those or not? No, I I turn them off normally. I think Same. whenever Same. the only time I do have them on, it's by accident, and I 
Uh, yeah. Can't figure out what's going on. I, I, yep. I'm the same way, man. I, I, oh, sometimes it's just, I, I, I know when there's certain projects that need that for certain yep. reasons, but when you're in this kind of zone of free, free, free flow, you know, like I love just have being able to move and not have that limitation, you yep. know? I mean, exactly. sometimes if you're like, if you're doing isometric stuff or whatnot, you kind of need to do it. Yes. But most time you can get away with it. Yeah. Dare I ever bring up the perspective grid? Do Oof. you use that at all? No. You know, okay. So I, I gotta, I gotta say, like, I'm and back me up if anybody in chat has used this. Uh, one day I just, you know, we how many times have we accidentally turned it on and yeah. then we go to look for the thing to turn it off, right? So yeah. there's a shortcut to learn, right? That's a good one. But one day I tried it and it's it's remarkable. It's yeah. particularly if like if you're if you want to do your artwork in perspective if you want to show it like a a three-quarter view of one of these things or or if the corner of the you know you're showing a little bit more perspective in your thing as you build it's doing all of the perspective based on the points you apply huh. uh in in and in, in real time and you yeah. don't have to even guess the perspective is is like point on it's actually pretty cool i heavily su suggest trying it the next time you accidentally <laughs> Click on it. <laughs> it <on>. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it's really it. neat. It's really amazing. Um, do you use tablets or do you draw 100% with mouse? I am mouse exclusively. Yes. I have tried a tablet a couple of times. Um, yep. And I like, I have a respect for people who do use them, but I just kind of can't get into the habit of it. I yeah, think. it's a, it's all it's all preference on on yeah. what you find. I, I know for years I was traveling a lot and I was using my my MacBook with the trackpad. And yeah. I got to actually be just as good, if not better on the trackpad mm -hmm. than I was on the mouse. It just yeah. blew me away. I was like, uh, so it's really what you use, you know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Huh, Christine says she's had some of the most disgusting IPAs because mom liked the label. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. It? Yeah, but I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming the craft beer industry is on fire there as well yeah of course yeah there you go it's looking good so we got our we got our three names we're going with looking glass as our as our brand name and so you've got your 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 uh requirements now are bringing in the brand name bringing mm -hmm. in the uh the wine name for sure as yep. well and getting that little easter egg in the other two and we gotta we gotta find out what those what those those uh, Easter eggs are gonna be. I'm gonna find the hardest animal in the world for you to draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Fish. Oh yeah. <laughs> there you I'll go. Draw a circle again. Nice. It's looking good. I like too that you know when you draw off of the 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 bleed you're not mm -hmm. trying to make those anchors end no. where the label is so Doesn't what matter. he's doing is you're getting that continuous flow of all the all the curves and everything he wants to do but they're masked within that window and now he can move them around it's literally like having cut paper you know and just moving it around to your frame yeah mm -hmm. oh and even like there you go so like match up the mountain on the left side there we go there you go. So like just those little hints of like continuity going across all three labels, you know, there you go. Oh man. Now everyone's talking about craft beer in the, in the chat, getting uh -oh. us all thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ollie. Someone's just joined the chat. <laughs> oh, there you go. What's going on, man. Thanks for joining us. We'll, we'll give you a, a little rundown of what we're doing. Jack Forrest is joining us. We are here doing a two-day packaging seminar uh, and kind of workshop here. He's going to create some winery labels. Our winery is called Looking Glass Winery or Vineyards, or we got to now we have to come up with that name. Um, oh no! But we're doing some fun little wine labels based off of some great little illustrations. And as we're going here, we're deciding on cool little things to add. So each one of them is going to be based on a region of Australia. Uh, we're going to put in a Easter egg. Uh, somewhere hidden where will be something kind of fun to find within the illustration. And now we've decided to the continuity is a good idea to have something going throughout all three labels. 
you know, primarily when these are on shelves, right, Jack, like they create a story in their own when they're placed together the same yep. way you're designing them. And I've seen that all, that's a huge trend now in packaging um, because you're creating like a store within a store um, and you're blurring out all the competition because they're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah, considering the whole package that. definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really fun, yeah. So this is looking good. So we're keeping the same. So would you maybe even down the road, like let's say you finish all three, would you mess around with maybe color palettes and like maybe darken one or lighten one in a way just so there's a little more uh, difference or what kind of things do you do towards the end of this when it comes to- I mean, an easier game? way, if you were looking to just kind of shift the whole thing. Yeah. Um, if we were just to like select that, if we're working down the line in Photoshop or something else, then you could just go and mm -hmm. select the whole lot and then just kind of adjust um, yes. the saturation on it and just pull it around. Yeah. And just kind of end up with something different. Yep. Have you ever used um, the edit color tool? I have not. Oh, it's amazing. Like, Let's like, so it. select that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And go to uh, edit colors. There you go. Uh, up a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. Right there. And recolor artwork. Ooh. Yeah, so now oh, go to uh, advanced options, click that one at the bottom, so you get a nice bigger one. So what it's done is it's pulled your swatches there, right? Now see where it says edit and assign on the top? Yeah, right. Go to, ed go to edit, and now, see there's like a little linkage, yeah, now move them around, there you go, look at that. There we go. And it's keeping values, like, so basically, yeah, you can stretch these out as you want, you can lock your proportions, so as you spin, but look mm. at the, the value, I mean, it's like so fast and yeah, it's, so maybe cool. it's colors you would have never even imagined, you know, really fun. So I, I really kind of, um, there you go. When we do our <laughs> night, so we're going to have our daytime drinking and we're going to have our nighttime drinking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the full suite. Yeah. If you guys have an experiment with that, um, in fact, now you can bring over in, oh, let's go back to it real quick. Um, cause you have those images off to the left there, right? Yeah. Those, um, so go back to edit color, recolor artwork. And now let's see, oh, go see where it says color theme picker. Click that. Now, now there you go. Click on him. And now it's colors from your photo. Damn. <laughs> That's so cool. Is that not the coolest thing? So you've, you, it's your inspiration art, right? And why not pull and look at that. It's like actually doing all the work in one click. Oh my God, that is so cool. That is so I cool. love that. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Yeah, Paul has demoed that a few times. It. I think this came out during Max as far as, the edit color has been there for a long time, but this yep. colored theme picker now, because um, I think it's fantastic. Most of us have the, ins the inspiration art right there on the side of our artboards, right? Yep. You know, that's great. Wow. Wonderful. Cool. So definitely guys, if you have not played around with that, just build some fun shapes, have a have a blast like Jack's doing here and try that edit color. It is so cool. Particularly if a, if a client goes, can we get those a little more neon or a little more pastel? Um, you could do it in one click yeah, and you can make, the whole make your, and make versions of it. You know, you always keep a live version of your original art, you know? Oh, that's looking cool. You got some nice like, same values coming over, but it is its own layout, which is cool. Has anybody been watching um, Adobe Summit? I'm curious. I caught a little bit of it today. That's mm -hmm. happening this week live on uh, the Adobe streams. And yeah, Max is coming back again uh, in October, I believe, right? Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. There you go, man. So let's see, we've got about 30 minutes. Um, let's, cool. let's make a, you want to, you want to shoot for a, a looking glass logo let's or do you want to, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's get into some branding. Uh, okay. it's, it's, it's font time <laughs> folks. Font time. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, I did have, I did have one that I was thinking of. Go um, for it. Let's see what you got. Which is this baby on, on Adobe fonts. Fat Frank. Fat Frank. Nice. This little, mm. little really fat sans serif. All right. So before you even go back to Illustrator, tell us why you picked that. What, what were you, what does it say to you when you, when you're picking out a font? 
it's kind of it's matching the the fun tone of it all i reckon that that okay. really fat wits to it like you're like you're seeing in these examples um it's just kind of got that energy to it it kind of matches the energy that you get from the colors yes correct i know it's so fun to kind of like understand what the the the, the difference is be oh this is a really great one i love the slight rounded it has yeah. on there um man what a game changer the adobe fonts is it's so, so nice to have this this freedom i there's you can never have the excuse that you could not find the right font right yeah <laughs> they're <laughs> they're all everything's there, there you know but i think yeah. what and you're doing is recommendations like, and stuff too yes isn't that fantastic yeah look at that that is so cool who designed that let's let's give him a shout out jeff right. jeff jeff schreiber all right man well dude great work there man i love that that's really cool so like that's the point like looking for the font that's that carries over the same personality of what you're doing right yeah or at least add, yeah that. add something else to it like it didn't have before yeah and and i love finding when you find a great font like that and it's got a few weights and varieties it's such a great uh, like what a starting point to have mm. a light and a heavy or um you know just to have some variety so you're keeping your font numbers down but you yeah. have a family to work with you know so what are we going for looking glass is that what we're looking glass there you go looking glass i like that all right what are we thinking mm -hmm. oh yeah thanks for putting the uh voodoo val has popped in the fat frank link oh, <laughs> into yeah. the chat good stuff <laughs> i think our, our our buddy who designed it's going to be like whoa 400 people <laughs> have just downloaded my font it's kicking it i love it all right what are we doing it kind of yeah it looks like yeah it's a great name for it i love that you know so here we go all right what's he gonna do what what are you thinking <laughs> as you're what are you thinking as you're laying this out um should it I like, mean, we've got some eyes here. That's always fun, oh, right? Oh, totally. There you go. <laughs> and and then also too, like like you you would you had a bit of a glass kind of thing going, but I love the just the wonkiness of this. That's really fun. There you go. <laughs> and are you thinking of like hierarchy at this point too, like or just let's just build something fun and then go and see how it's going to incorporate into the design. Yeah, I think step one, you just play around and see what you get. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so sh I think you did shift command O, which is uh, create outlines. Yep. That's a fun thing to do for. So I, I, I tend to do that. Do you do that automatically too when you lay some fonts out? Like just Yeah, but I keep a it? copy because then I always forget to go back and change something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if there's one pro tip you remember from this entire stream, that's exactly it. So uh, before you do that command shift O, right, and create outlines, keep a live version of that text. Yeah. Not just always. because of like, I mean, let's face it, nine times out of 10, you're like, what was the name of the font, right? Yeah. But yeah. And then you're trying to you spend another 10 minutes scrolling through, trying to find it again. Yeah. yeah. But but it's just convenience to have it there and go like, okay, I can build another one really quick and try it or change it to something else because it's live, which is great. Yeah. What if we do yep. a kind of fisheye sort of thing? Ooh, what's he gonna do guys? Uh oh. He's messing around no, with it. That. <laughs> <laughs> Little, which which one are you going to go? Twist? Yeah, I don't know. There you go. Mm. And you also got like envelope distort is a great one to kind of yeah. mess around with your type. Yep. Yeah, it reminds me of chocolate mm. letters we have in the Netherlands during this. Okay, yeah, totally. I see that. I don't know if you're going for a kind of... Ooh, a little skewed from the, like, maybe it's coming in the looking glass. Yeah, like looking through I like it. that. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Hearing some great names. Steve just said there's a brewery in New Zealand here called Nine Backyard Owls. <laughs> what a great <laughs> name. <laughs> oh, I love it. There we go. So getting a little distortion in there, we got our looking glass kind of, this can almost be like you're looking into the glass or, you know, or the magnifying glass of its own. That's yeah. kind of fun, you know, it's looking good. Hmm. 
kind of just disobeying all laws in terms of manipulating type here, but ah, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm the fun a, thing you know, when you like... keep the, the type intact as well as you can edit it after you're doing this distortion stuff. That's always good too, as well. I noticed too, like, um, in, I think it was maybe in the last few updates of Illustrator where you can keep the live text and you can actually select the individual letter and do all mm. this fun manipulation to it and still keeping it live as well. There's so, yeah. so many, so much good control on that now. Yeah. It kind of looks a little like the crystal ball a little bit there. That's kind of cool. But I love this idea that just taking the iteration of what you're saying and turning it into some graphic or some design there. Um, Oh, there you go. Even just like kind of filling the glass could be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Has anybody else found a favorite font on Adobe fonts that they are just digging? Let yeah, us what know. Else, love what to, else can we work with? Yeah. I just love to, I, I'm, I'm almost doing it as just like, tell me what you've discovered. I need some new <laughs> fonts. <laughs> What what is kind of work for you guys? I I think too. I always check on there and, and hit the new button too all the time yeah. just to see what kind of what's kind of been popping up. Um, and then also they do the kind of collections where they put them together um, based on the fact that they kind of uh, they'll put five or six of them together based on a theme. It's really yeah. nice to see that as well. Cool. So we're building our yeah. our looking glass here. Nice. Yeah, we can turn it. We're thinking of that too as well, Christine, turning it into a bit of a wine glass. Um, cool. Envelope mesh. This is a fun, fun little tool. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes that the, I think just doing things by hand creates yeah. that, that originality. I mean, Sometimes the trends happen because we're using the same tools and we're using the same approach, but every once in a while, yeah, do something like in, this. Just grab it. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, even that's kind of funky. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Right. Like, I mean, it's kind of like sometimes accidentally is maybe some of the best ways to kind of get these things working, you know? Yeah. That looks good. We're getting there. Yep. If we put a stroke oh, here we go. So we got some good ones. So Poppins and Times New Roman are your, Cheryl's favorite fonts. Poppins. Oh, yeah. I have. Isn't it funny too? Like you hear the name and you're like, I think no I can idea. picture what it looks like. <laughs> 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 yep. Jake likes Proxima Nova. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good, good one. one. Yep. It's always a go-to starter for uh, anything he's working on. You can start playing around with it a little bit, which is kind of cool as well. Cool. By the way, let's let's just take a good glance at chat. Where are you guys all from? Where are you watching? Let us know. Yeah. I know we're a few. I know we got a few from from in your neck of the woods, but let's see where else everybody's <laughs> at. Poppins is huge with the XD crew. Steve says. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So maybe it's a, a well used font in that kind of zone. Cool. Oh, he's bringing in his signature pink. It's coming. Can't go wrong with the pink. Yeah. Robert, Robert's coming from, we got someone from Sweden. We got St. Louis. Yes, Babis New. That's a great one. Yeah. Canada. That. That's good. Rob's from Canada. We got yeah, England in the house. This is great. Hope everyone's having a great day and enjoying this. We'll be back tomorrow for sure. We have another two hours. We'll be kind of continuing on from here. Yep. Steve's from New Zealand. Carol's from South Florida. Christine, Ontario, Canada. Cody, originally from Oregon, but now in Spokane, Washington. We have Bangladesh. We have Paris, Portugal. Dude, we're, we we're quite international today. <laughs> I love it. Isn't that great? Indonesia. That was my first international trip ever. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. When was that? Re Ray's in Las Vegas. We have Sam in Australia. He's feeling a bit sleepy too. Jake's oh. in Denver. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Atlanta, Georgia, Denmark. Very cool. Thanks for joining us, guys. This is great. 
great community we all have here. Oh, we got that continuity happening again. Here we go. Yep. Man, we've got more. Andreas is from Brazil. Lucas from Chicago. Oh, Chicago is my favorite town. Such a good spot. Have you been to the States before, Jack? I've been twice. Oh, you have? Where, what have you seen yeah. out here? Um, where have I been? I've been to Seattle a couple of times. Great. Um, we drove through Arizona. We did a road trip around there, Grand Canyon style. That was kind Wonderful. of the majority of it. Yeah. I yeah, know. Lovely place. Great, man. Very cool. There we go. Look at I love the way the buildings are connecting. We got the mountainscape kind of continuing. It's okay. We have three sons. That's all right. <laughs> it's, okay. it's shifting. It doesn't matter. It's, shif <laughs> it's shifting. Yep. Love it. Wow. We got, let's see where else. Algeria. We have Fort Collins, Colorado, New York, man, all over the place today. I didn't see if anybody had noticed or I mentioned, but was anybody watching the Adobe Summit today? Um, I saw some cool stuff with the, um, with the, I think it was a combination with Adobe and Workfront who have mm. put together all new, they're putting together all new like workflow calendar and great stuff to work along with your Adobe um, software. So look oh, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> fonts named after cities chicago that's the one that i think it's the first one that comes on a mac <laughs> if anyone could put together a fantastic design uh with chicago font yeah, chicago that <laughs> that would be a feat <laughs> got a few more from india glad you guys are with us today it's looking good cool so we're putting together some wine labels they're all inspired by uh, Looking Glass is the name of our winery. Jack is joining us from Australia, and we are doing some fantastic wine bottles here. Um, today, we're, we're mostly focused on getting a nice series of them designed. This was all done in less than two hours. Jack's a quick. powerhouse. <laughs> yep, powerhouse at this uh, illustrator development. Always good to see people and their, their technique and their process as they go through here. Um, it's based on a really neat little illustration style that he started and we're keeping the color palettes the same. We're messing around with things. You can see we got some continuity happening on all, all the different things here. Um, let's see, are you talking about cloverapp.co? Howard mentioned it on Twitter. Ooh, uh, what, what is that uh, uh, referring to? I can't remember what I might've been mentioning. Sorry guys. Um, let me know what that was. Oh, what were our yeah. um, Easter eggs going to be for the other two? Ooh, we do need that. Yeah. So, we need. okay. Any of the, any of our, um, our uh, aficionados out there, we need two more Easter eggs. We have the swan in the first one. So let's see. Um, let's go with, I'm going to look up some other bird varieties maybe and see what we have here. Yeah. Oh, thanks for putting that voodoo. Val, if there's, we have about 10 minutes left. What other questions do you guys have for us? We're, we're happy to ask. We have an emu. We have the magpie. We have, we could do a parrot. We have the rainbow lorikeet, yes. I believe. We have the <laughs> that is a sulfur crested cockatoo. You got, you got, you got your These choice, man. You bird fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. We got, okay, so moon, sun, um, we got a wombat, we have a prawn, we have a snake. Uh, let's see. Oh, there you go. The Evernote replacement for um, app. Yeah, it was called, that could have been what it was. It was done today on the Adobe Summit thing. I can't remember. They had a hashtag on there that it was a, a really cool new way to rearrange. Like if you have um, something in your schedule and you are canceling it, it actually yeah. will help rearrange your schedule. Um, it brings in documents that someone might've shared on Creative Cloud with you uh, to do an approval, but it's all, and I think it uses the AI, the Sen Adobe Sensei stuff as well. So really cool stuff there I saw earlier today. A shark. Ooh, even just having a fin <laughs> coming Ooh. out of the water. Ooh, that's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, there you go. I knew that sounds it. good. That sounds good. That's More the one on Jack's that. gonna take. I love it. <laughs> 
parrot, jellyfish. Hey, a jellyfish is in the water. You just don't see it. <laughs> that's true. It's already there. That's that's the it's ultimate Easter, Easter egg. You can't even. It's see an it. Easter egg. It's gonna be there. <laughs> the parrot would be a good one too, because the the neat thing too is you could just have the hint of the beak coming through the same way you did with the swan. That would be yep. cool. Koala bear is a drop bear. Okay, there you go. Koala bear. Is that an Australian making that reference? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. There you go. What other questions? Like anything else as far as packaging, putting together? I know with, um, you know, getting things ready for print, you name it. Um, what other things do you guys have any questions for? Um, we're here to help. That's the whole point. We're here, man. Stop using Evernote subs and migrate it to Apple Notes. Yep, that's a good one. Let's see. Anybody? Yeah, throw in some questions, guys. We're just wrapping up. This is a great spot we're at because I think you're going to have a ton of fun stuff to start messing around with and, and playing with. Um, we should yeah, even try doing like, packaging. yeah. You know what's great too is like, we were doing it in, in our class earlier this week where we were taking bottles and then also creating the the box in dimension to go along yeah. with it. Yeah, you we're know? gonna be doing that as well. Yeah, and, and that's what's so a, neat a great, about a great model your that asset. I found on Adobe Stock. Yeah, and your assets are all said and done. So now it's just like taking them and, and messing around with other models, you know? Yeah. Um, it's totally fun to play around with. Yeah, we, we were, um, Anna, you asked about using layers. We, we haven't, I don't think we've used many here, but he's founding, he's had his own kind of work process with having things in particularly with clipping paths or masking them. And then that way they're kind of, or grouping certain images above and beyond. But I like the, I like the free flow of not worrying about layers so much until I'm probably sending this off. I don't know. Do yeah. you, you know, maybe yeah, that no, might be, we all have some different kind of vibes there. Yep. Um, Easy way to change PPI in an outgoing Illustrator doc. Um, is Illust Illustrator not? Illustrator shouldn't matter. Yeah, no, Illustrator is a is pure vector. I mean, um, obviously in in other in other forms, and I, I know for too with um, it's a. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. In Dimension, um, there are artboards and P and PPI in there. So a lot of times, if you guys are exploring and just starting out with Dimension, make sure you look at that first and increase that artboard size because. Um, in particular yeah. you want these things to when you render it sometimes it could take a few minutes um and you want to make sure you're using very high quality art that you're bringing in from libraries so that's a, a cool tip there if you're starting any dimension work Let's what see what, what are our there. um types of wine what are we working with oh so we've got um we have the melville merlot and we have mm -hmm. the perth pinot so if you want to start messing around with those while we we sum it up here um what else do we have yeah, that could have been, yeah, it could have been what you were mentioning there from Howard's tweet. I, I, I'm assuming it, if it was the same kind of topic, it was probably the same thing we were watching today. Uh, any tips for sending artwork for print for labels? You got to ask them what they want right from the very beginning. Um, particularly if it's, if it's a, a print vendor that your client has already put together, um, you want to ask them in particularly, what do they need? ask for a spec sheet sometimes a lot of times they might even just have that ready to go and it has all of the information there that you will need to know uh 100 um format uh dimension uh you name it crops or not like a lot of times too here um i know we're designing these for fun but um sometimes the printer is going to probably want the bleed you know set up as well um yeah. with some crop marks as well so those are things here um do you think about the label text, like the ingredients, volume, et cetera. Yeah, that's math, Matthias, that's completely what you have to be considering too. Um, in most cases, I know with my clients, they give, I don't start designing until they've handed over every element that has to be on that label or that box or that packaging. So it's nutritional facts, it's uh, the ingredient list, it's the legal information, uh, the contents, you know, like the net weight. You wanna have all of that so um, uh, any, any last minute surprise, you don't want it to have to like, you know, mess up your, your wine label, you know? Yeah. Yep. And particularly, the, um, every country has different laws. I know we're doing some stuff right now. That's, um, a lot of times, uh, companies have shared value and they are in the States and they're also in Canada. So then the packaging has to have, the double. uh, 
Yep, you gotta have, yep. have the French Canadian on there as well as the American. So there's that is some of the most. I don't know if you've ever seen a spec sheet for that man, but yeah. oh, <laughs> oh my god, that is the. Uh, it is literally like Tetris, making it all work <laughs> out just right. You know, yeah. But I do think at this stage you shouldn't really be bothering as much though, because then you just get caught up with it. So as long mm -hmm. as you kind of keep it in mind that it, it's going to be yeah. a part of the process later on, but mm -hmm. yeah, you can always, as long as it's in the background and you're just aware that it's coming well, down the road, be. you know, it should be Aussie. <laughs> ah, there we go. Come on, man. There we go. Yep. Yeah. It's looking good. So what a quick move you just did by just taking everything, cropping it into the glasses and starting a, a bit of a, a look and feel here, you know, yeah. this looks great. Yeah, the French language policy, uh, pol police in Canada, <laughs> man, I, I, I got some stuff back and they were like, I think it was, they were using measurement, not point size because point size is different per fonts, right? So yep. there was a X, the X height had to be this in, insane, uh, perfect match. And we were, we had no more room. We just, so apparently we, at that point, the client just had to take certain thing, call offs call outs out of the design because oh, there just no. wasn't any more room it was like room oh yeah it was it was crazy it was crazy all right what do we well, got for other good, two? Man. okay so then we have perth uh perth pino give us a third one guys give us a australian town and a variety so what other varieties let's see let's get this before we are done let's see wine varieties we have what do we got? We could do a Syrah. We can do a Sydney. Yeah. What about a Sydney Shiraz? Ooh, yeah. There we go. Dude, that's teamwork right there, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. There we go. Cool. We got some Tasmanian Tinto Roja. I love that. <laughs> There's some good ones there. <laughs> cool. We're, we, we got some great setups. Looking really, really fun there, man. This looks great. I want to also remind you guys, tomorrow yep. we are back for sure. We're going to be back as well. But I also want to make sure um, as a full day ahead of us tomorrow, um, wrapping up today, we have at 12 p.m., uh, we're, we're going to be back here as well, doing it from 12 PM to 2 PM. And there's tons of other great stuff to look at and, and kind of, uh, check out while we're doing it. Um, we've got, let's see, we're back 12. And then right after us is going to be Eric, I'm sorry, Aaron Nace's photo editing stream. Uh, if you want to learn everything as far as leaping into Lightroom, uh, and Photoshop, be sure to join him. It starts tomorrow at 9.30 Pacific as he teaches you all of his greatest hits in editing photos. I love this idea of this leap from um, Lightroom to Photoshop. I know a lot of people start there as well and then kind of take over and get into that, that zone of um, yeah. cool stuff, what you could do in Photoshop. Um, are you, have you used Lightroom much at all, Jack? Uh, I have not, I'm yeah. not an expert, but I have, yeah. it definitely makes a big difference and definitely in terms of like doing, um, more batch processing instead of just doing mm -hmm. like one photo. So if you can yeah. kind of get like the color grading and stuff, right. To start with on the set. And then if you want to move into Photoshop for like your individual little yeah. adjustments. Yeah. I've actually been even using it a lot on the, uh, on the mobile devices. It's oh, actually yeah? pretty. Yeah. The, um, we did a whole series on our show, um, uh, office hours and it was all about the mobile apps that you can use and how well um, kind of suited they are to when you can fo uh, follow up with on your desktop apps and yeah. all of the assets and everything's there you can continue on with it and it's such a great tool to have that uh, flexibility and when you're out and about maybe taking pictures and doing kind of cool stuff um, you know you bring in that into your work I love that idea of using your phone as like a outside scanner and yeah, bringing you're always kind of working things. yeah yeah, exactly. Oh, it's pretty probably. cool. Yeah. Oh, Sydney Savignon. That's a good one. Mm. <laughs> yep. That's really cool. Perfect. Oh yeah, this is looking good. So you got your you got your quick little stem there from the glass. You got a 750 milli milliliters. Aussie made. Looking good. And and the cool part about this is you can take this into so many different ways with what when we take this into dimension, we can try this route where we're going to do it in the glass. We can go back yep. to your original ones and mess around with those, you know, uh, in those full labels. Yeah, um, do whatever we want. Yeah, 
That's just great. Even just start playing with these stickers a bit more, maybe make some more stickers. Mm Mm-hmm. Pick them on the bottles. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's our label. And then we start to Mm -hmm. play around with these stickers a bit more. Yeah. This looks great, dude. There's so many good so many good kind of options we can kind of pull from. It's always neat. Do you find ways of like um when you're working on something kind of per day, do you kind of like tend to like get to a certain goal and then put it away and then come back to it refreshed? Yeah, I think whenever you just feel like you're out of juice, really. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's something that you should just know. Like you yeah. can tell when you when you're working away at something and then you're really in the zone, you're kind of pushing through it. And then you yeah. get to a point where you're just like, okay, that's that's it now. <laughs> I've got I've got nothing left to give, and I think at that point you should really just get up and walk away because when you come exactly. back, you're gonna have you're gonna have more to work with. Yeah, for sure, man. I love it because it's it's neat. We all hit those different breaks and those different points where you know the creative kind of block happens. Yeah. Um And and it's neat too. I think that's one of the best things about this is seeing how everybody, other folks work. You know, it's yeah. kind of a great kind of way and a window into that kind of stuff. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. Yeah. So, so give us a little, give us a little overview as we, um, uh, we kind of sum up here, Get, start from the beginning, what we did. Cool. So we made a wine label, we had some references and we've kind of, we were looking at a vignette kind of thing. We made some illustrations, we pushed them into a, a wine glass mock-up and now we're going to go tomorrow and put them on some bottles. Perfect. Quick snap. Looking great. (laughs) Cool. So guys, don't forget to join us again tomorrow. We'll be back here at two, uh, sorry, noon Pacific um, till two o'clock. We're going to be finishing up all these and we're going to see how they look. Um, Thanks for joining us today, guys, from all over the world. We really appreciate it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys.